Good Sunday morning and welcome to WGN TV Political Report. I'm Paul Lisnick. This week, we're taking a closer look at the Democratic Party primary for Cook County Circuit Court Clerk. It's the office that maintains court files, collects fines and fees for the second largest unified court system in the world. Democrat Iris Martinez is seeking a second term, but she's facing a challenge from within her own party. Incoming Cook County Circuit Court Clerk Iris Martinez joins me this morning in our WGN studios. Madam Clerk, good to see you. Good to see you too, Paul. Appreciate you coming in. So you were the first Latina in the state Senate uh, where you spent 17 years. You rose to assistant majority leader um, and then stepped up when the, your predecessor in this job chose not to run after 20 years. You vowed to clean everything up, modernize the system. How, what success have you had? Well, we've had a lot of success in the office. Uh, on contrary to what they hear out there, you know, we've been able to, you know, open up a call center, open up a domestic violence center, open up an expungement center. You know, well, we're going to get to that. Talk okay. about the modernization. The modernization we've been yeah. able to upgrade. So when we got when we got there, we were we we're looking at software that dated back to 2015 and 2017. So you could imagine the technology that we needed to really insert to make sure that we are up. So right now we are up to 2023 as far as the technology. One of the things that we saw was the, the when the website went down, it was because of old, outdated technology. Today, you know, working with, you know, uh, one of our vendors, we were able to create a website that has had no more problems, has never gone down, you know, but we are seeing that, you know, the technology continues to evolve, so we have to continue. The glitches are going to happen, glitches are always going to happen. You've seen what happened, you know, over at Lurie Cherry Hospital, you know, with all these, uh, you know, ransomware and everything. We've been lucky that we've been really, really, uh, have had a great team there that has really prohibited, well, not prohibited, but have they really worked to make sure that these hits that are coming to mm -hmm. all of these, you know, government offices are, are being monitored and making sure, because we've had some hits, but we've had been able to take care of it right when the hits have come. So again, technology is not an easy thing, but you know, we're, we're really uh, working through it. And as you know, every elected official has to deal with the, the, with the public customer service. So you have pointed uh, in, your, in your website and such to improvements in customer service, clear, uh, clearing a backlog of criminal record expungements, opening a new expungement department that's housed in the criminal court at 26 mm -hmm. and Cal. Talk about how that shift has helped in the functioning of the office. Well, I think the fact is that, you know, when you do a clerk in the community, like I started from the very beginning of my term, went out into the community, went out to visit all different areas in Cook County, one of the things that we did see was a lot of people were approaching our office about expungements, the more and more, and that there were summits that were held in the past by my predecessor, and then we then here, we, you know, we get to our office, we see that backlog of over 5,600 uh, uh, applications that were still sitting there, you know, not, you know, not processed, which we took care of. And now, you know, and then we started working with people like Father Flager, uh, Reverend uh, um, Calloway and Roseland and getting, uh, working with those community groups and expungement stuff that they've been working on. And now it's been, it's easier for us because now we have a division that actually on a day to day, every single day, they're processing these applications. So that's something that it's really helped and people can come and start the process right in and our And it's in the now. court building. It's so in the court that building, it's safe. You mentioned in your first answer about the new domestic violence center, but I wanted to, to take a focus on that. It's a safe haven for victims to come forward, press charges. Talk about that new project. The, when I went over to the Markham uh, Courthouse, you know, it was an open space, an open space where victims are sitting there filling up paperwork, you know, bruised, you know, hurt children right there. And, and the perpetrators walking around like nothing. It was important for me to find a, a safe space. We were able to find it in the lower level of the, of the Markham Courthouse. We found an old space that had furniture, old furniture, old files. I said, clear this up. We have to make, we have to create a space. And today we have a safe space that anyone can come and to fill out their paperwork and that the children are also in a safe place in a room where we have a Nickelodeon TV for them, watching food, uh, you know, uh, uh, coloring books and yeah. you know, books for they can them to read and be able to tell the children, you can take that with you. You know what I mean? Because they've been traumatized enough and we want to make sure that we create that space, which we did at the Markham Courthouse. On no another note, uh, looking at sort of oversight and stuff, your opponent wants to eliminate the role of the internal inspector general, who's chosen by the clerk, uh, and ask that the county's office of the independent inspector general do the job. Well, you good with that? Well, let me just say this. I inherit the, the position. Okay. I inherit the position, found someone from the private sector, who came in, he's very independent. He's in a separate building on a separate floor all by himself with his, with his, uh, with his uh, employees. And those employees have been put through the, the, the national certification of inspector generals. So they are properly being trained. So the independency, every agency has an inspector general. So this whole thing about independent, yes, the independent OIG, which is the big one, OIG, is not independent because they're hired by the county. So again, you know, I have that off. I have that there because it's important that people can, people can feel free. 
from our office to report anything that's going on that they feel and our and our inspector general is investigating and making sure that he's opening and closing these cases. All right, now in every campaign, of course, people get ads all the time. So there's some allegations and uh, things about you that I want you to address. And this is your opportunity to do it here. So there have been errors in the system. Last year, WBEZ reported that the county had erroneously put felonies on the record of people in some diversion programs for at least three years. You put the blame on Chief Judge Tim Evans because those orders come right. from him. But last week during an update of the system, the names of thousands of children charged with crimes, those were exposed online. Does the buck stop with your office? You know what? Again, these are all exaggerations. You know, things are fed to the media just because it's a campaign. It's funny. I've had, Is it had, not true? It, it's not true. It's, 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 they, were the records exposed to the public? No. Now, there was a test period that was done to make sure that we're doing an online, an online case uh, research uh, is, is, being, is being inputted into the system. What we saw was that we wanted to work with our partners to make sure that they look, they test this this online search to make sure that there's nothing, no, no glitches and everything. What about the felonies put on records? The felonies put on record, again, we are just a record keeper. I want, I want people to know that. We just maintain the records. We keep the records. We don't input information into these records that is not given to us by a so judge. So the fault belongs with the chief well, judge's the judge, office. Well, there's three people in a room, right? There's the judge, the, the public defender and there is a state attorney. They're all three there. When when a motion is has to be filed, it has to be put into the into into the record. So then our clerks can go ahead and put the information into the into the system. If none of that is visible, then we cannot put that information. Now we see it. We talk to the chief Evans office about it, and right away. Collaborating with all three of them, we were able to get that. So that, again, it just shows you that we cannot put anything in the system that is not given to us right. by any, by in, any of them. In right. 2020, you pledged to adhere to the highest ethical standards, but a Tribune investigation found that you accepted $45,000 in campaign contributions from 52 clerk employees. 22 of them had just received promotions and raises. It looks like pay to play. I'm going to let you <laughs> respond. But you did have a response, right. which was, look, you didn't make anybody pay, and you said correlation doesn't imply causation. But at a minimum, is that not the appearance of impropriety? Well, you know what? I, I guess, you know, when you look at the office and, and the past, my predecessor was selling jobs. That's what we saw. But this selling is you it. now, and right, you want right. the So what again. I'm saying is, right now we have. I have events. There's no doubt I have events. I have two events a year where I have a birthday party, and you know, and I, anyone comes. I've always you think said, they feel pressure, though. No, they shouldn't. No, they, they they don't feel pressure because first of all, I got 1,400 employees that work there. I have 100 checking positions that belong to me that I bring in people that I've known, people that you know, people that I know were surrounding me and, and create and, and follow the mission that we were on. Now, what about a policy that says I don't want contributions from people who work? You know me? what? I, that's something that, you know, my, my next term. Yeah, if that's, I mean, if, it, it's funny because that's been what they've made this to be. And you know what? When you look at over the course of three years of that amount of money, but nobody's talking about my opponent and what she's done with the money that she's received from vendors doing business with the Office of well, I'll, I'll talk right. to her about that. But, right, but, but, I mean, again, but, again, when, but again, these things are, are spoon-fed, and then the way it's written, the way it's written makes it sound like it's a play-to-play. -play. Especially when, the, when, the, when, when I came in, we were able to help individuals in that office move them up. They've never had opportunities to, be, to have a raise, to be able to go into different positions. We're up in mobility. We created that. So those promotions they're talking about, they were there. There was a mass uh, uh, classification across the whole entire county where if somebody, if you were an AA and one in the, say, in the Department of Transportation, and I was an AA over in the clerk's office, they should be making the same amount of money. And so there was a lot of that adjustments that were made. So what looked like a promotion really was adjustments that were made, and there were promotions of people that I was able to raise from within that they never got opportunities to now become leaders. So and maybe be they were thankful, but having a policy right. change and that might be, uh, uh, you're okay with that idea. That's fine. You know what? And that's, I'm, I'm okay with it because I've been 40 years. 40 years that I have been in public service. Uh, some of those people that we're talking about are people that have been with me that now are working for me. And it's, they, it, I don't obligate anybody to give me any money. I will never do that. I have never told someone, in order for you to work for me, you got you to gotta give me some money. Right. That has never, said, ever. There, there could be the, the feeling the of, feeling of pressure of, But on that's, them. again, again, I know me, and I know that I'm the most honest and transparent person out there. And I've never had anyone question until now because of the fact that the other side is getting very, very desperate, and they're making up all kinds of lies. And that's really a sad, because this is a service to my office and to the people that are there that work very hard and believe in the work that we're doing and want to keep working because they believe that we have a lot of 
work to do in the clerk's office. Of course, as you know, in Cook County, you get the um, the blessing of the of the leaders, and that's <laughs> that's sort of powerful here. You did not receive the the backing of the Cook County Democratic Party in your first bid back in 2020. Again, this year, uh, it looks like they're going to back your opponent here. They are backing your opponent. Uh, she also has a major fundraising advantage over you. Talk about kind of the disconnect between the traditional party and you. Well, you know what I think. That you're a Democrat. I'm a Democrat. I've been a, a true blue Democrat all my life. I am the I'm the Hispanic Caucus chair of the DNC on a national level. So you know what? You talk about a real Democrat. It's me. When you talk about the fact that you have a a party that doesn't support the incumbent, even though four years ago as a sitting senator, I did not get the nod. They gave it to someone who had a lot of money, a lot of money, and it was not uh, a, a, a non-Latino, non, uh, you know, not a person of color. That's fine. They did that. But I said, I'm still going to run. I, I'm being punished right now because I did run against a party. However, when you look at the people that are right now sitting in the ticket right now were people who ran against the party in the past. So they're treating me with a very, in a, with a very different, you know, set of rules. Second of all, here you have a person who has a lot of money who just poured in $1.4 million into this race. The party is about who can actually self-fund. It's not about who can do the work or who's done the work. And when I look at what I've done in that office, the, ye the, the turnaround of that office for the past three years, based on what's happened for 20 years, I should, be, I, should be, I should have been endorsed based on the work, not on the politics. And because of the fact that I ran against the party, that was one question, and that I also uh, supported some candidates that I shouldn't have. I'm a committee woman. I can support whoever I want. Everybody has that one about supporting people that they've worked with, people that they know can be a good person in government. And you know what? I'm being held to a different standard. And the saddest thing about it is that right now, if you look at that ticket, it's a black and white ticket. There are no Latinos at the top of the ticket. So how are we supposed to motivate our people to come out to vote when I'm being dissed by my party, by my own party? And that's okay because you know what? I beat I beat them last time. I'm going to work real hard to do it again this time. All right, Clerk Iris Martinez, I wanted to give you the opportunity to address those issues. You have done that, and I thank you for your time and for coming in this Thank morning. you very much. Appreciate it. We're going to take a quick break. Coming up next on WGN-TV Political Report, the other side of the race for Cook County Circuit Court Clerk. Stay with us.